Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining engine balancing. Now one of the most important factors in building a reliable uh, engine that's going to last for a good amount of time uh, is to make sure that all of the forces in that engine are balanced out. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video um, and then I'm going to go into a bit more detail in some future videos. But basically the forces that you're going to want to balance out are the rotational mass uh, forces uh, relating to the rotational mass, forces relating to reciprocating mass, and then forces relating to the firing of the individual cylinders. So, let's get started with rotational mass. Uh, so basically what we want to do here is we want to balance all of the forces, all of the moments, and we want the center of gravity to be on the axis of rotation. So that means um, if this is your axis of rotation, you want the center of gravity to be on this so that as it rotates, you don't have a force that's pulling this uh, mass around. So, Basically what we've got here is we're going to be rotating about this line here and we've got these two masses here. So you can see that the, the moment is balanced because as this rotates these are going to want to come in like that and that force balances out on the center there. Now the forces however um, of that mass spinning around are always going to be pointing outward. So as that mass spins around that force is going to be pointing out um, and so you're going to have an unbalanced force there. And if that were, for example, your crankshaft, well, your engine's going to be shaking like crazy. So you want to get rid of that. So, okay, well, let's take this here, this mass here, and put it down here. That way our forces are now balanced out. Well, our center of gravity is, is now also on the axis of rotation, so that's good. The problem is with these two, uh, we're just going to call them pistons here and just as an example, but basically these two masses uh, rotating around, the, the moment this force wants to rotate in about this center here, and this force wants to rotate in about this center. So as it does that, as this were to rotate, you'd have a rocking couple, and basically what this is going to want to do is kind of go like this as it rotates around, kind of make this cone shape. So that's not good. So what can we do to counteract that? Well, you can stick some counterweights on both ends. So once you do that, all of your forces are now balanced out. You've got green here and green here going in opposite directions. Those cancel out. These cancel out. And then your moments about the center, those cancel out. Moments about the center, those cancel out. And your axis, your center of gravity is on your axis of rotation. So this is dynamically balanced um, and that'd be a great start for your engine. The next thing we want to look at is reciprocating mass. And this is going to be something that I'm going to have to get into a bit more detail um, in future videos. But basically, what you want to balance out here is you've got all these uh, items within your engine that are reciprocating. The biggest one, uh, the most important, is going to be your pistons. So your pistons are pretty large, uh, pretty heavy uh, relative to the other reciprocating items, um, such as you could have push rods uh, or your valves uh, that are going to be moving up and down. So this reciprocating mass that's going to go up and down, you want to balance those forces out. If you just have uh, a single cylinder engine and you've got that one <clears throat> piston moving up and down, you're going to have a force on that engine going up and then down and then up and then down. So for example here where you've got these two uh, pistons moving up and down, as those move up and down, those forces counteract each other uh, so it balances out. So there's several types of forces. Um, basically they're just defined as primary, secondary, tertiary, and what that means is how often it occurs per revolution. So for one revolution of this crankshaft, uh, the primary forces are basically that piston. That piston is going to go up and then down and then back up uh, with one rotation of the, of the crankshaft. So what that looks like, what the force looks like is as it goes up, hits the top so you've got an upward force, starts coming down, hits the bottom so you've got that downward force, and then comes back up and hits the top so you've got that upward force. So that's that primary uh, force and basically what you can do is add on a counterweight in order to cancel out that uh, force that the piston is creating. So the other type of force we've got is a secondary force and these are forces that occur twice uh, for every rotation of the crankshaft. And basically what this comes down to is the piston moves faster um, at the top of its rotation to the top of the cylinder than it does at the bottom of the cylinder. And I'll have a video going into more detail about secondary forces. But what that looks like is it occurs on this sinusoidal wave uh, twice for one revolution. So this graph we've got here is a single revolution of the crankshaft and we're looking at the different forces. So here's your primary, here's your secondary, and then basically once you get into tertiary and, and beyond that, uh, forces that occur more frequently, they get very small and so you kind of stop worrying about them at that point. 
Now, what you end up doing is you look at this total force, um, and you can see here, this is what you're actually going to have to balance out. So you're going to want to use counterweights uh, in order to balance out this force here, because that's going to be what your engine is going to... This is basically showing you how your engine is going to vibrate. It's going to have an upward force at this point in time, and then a downward force at this point in time. So by balancing out each of these individual primary and secondary forces, you can have it so you just have a flat line there and a nice balanced engine. Finally, you, you're going to want to balance your firing forces. So all this means is you want to have an even distribution of how often you fire each cylinder. So you don't want to fire all cylinders at the same exact time. You want to split that up and then have that um, each one occur in a set period of time. So basically there's a very simple equation to figure out this. Um, you've got, if you have a four-stroke engine, uh, you've got one stroke occurring every 180 degrees, and then you just divide by the number of cylinders. So this will give you an even interval for firing. So our example here, we're just going to have a four-stroke V8. Um, so you've got your four strokes, multiply that by 180, you've got 720, divide that by the number of cylinders, and you've got 90 degrees. So what you're going to want to do with the V8 engine is fire one cylinder every 90 degree uh, rotation of the crankshaft, and that'll balance out the firing forces. Now this also dictates uh, the engine angle. So if it comes out that you should fire every 90 degrees, well, for a V8, a good angle to use would be 90 degrees. That way you can have that firing interval match up with the engine layout. And I'll get into more detail uh, on individual engine layouts as well. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments on engine balancing, feel free to ask them below.